What's your ex from hell story? When my fiancé's ex found, who he has a kid with, found out I was pregnant she texted him that he should convince me to give it up for adoption because it probably wasn't even his. Then when that failed to get a reaction, she took a screenshot of the sonogram I posted on Facebook and sent it to him next to a shot of their daughter's sonogram, to show how different they looked as proof he wasn't the father of mine. That is kind of hilarious, to me most sonograms look like vaguely human blobs. I was in the process of a divorce, not yet finalized, I was divorcing because of exes cheating, there is this somewhat vague, unclear rule that if I were to have sex with her during this time it could constitute as a reconciliation, in any case, ex is still living in the apartment with me, I get home from work and she starts to seduce me, to me this seems pretty weird as she hasn't wanted to do anything sexual with me for months, I know I shouldn't do this but she stripped down to nothing and gets really physical, basically she strips down and starts trying to push me into the bedroom and pull my clothes off, I think for a minute contemplating what I should do, fortunately, I decide to walk out of the apartment, when I open the door one of her friends was standing right there with a camera, the plan was to get me in the bedroom and then have this friend film us, without my knowledge, so that she could say we reconciled, using video evidence, and could possibly then be entitled to alimony. That friend is such a fucking scumbag. Guy that I broke up with two months earlier showed up at my house at 2 a.m. and banged on the door until I opened it. He pushed his way past me into the house, and put a dead, skinned rabbit in my freezer. It was almost completely skinned. But the head was intact teats and all, I have no idea where he got it, but it was just in a plastic grocery bag, I actually couldn't tell what it was until after he left, because it was all wrapped up, I was trying to stay calm, but he's 6'3 and I'm only 5'5, five five. it was scary as fuck, he was completely sober too. Did I mention that he lived 90 minutes away, had no friends in my town, and I had asked him numerous times to stay away from my house. My male roommate woke up and the ex took off after grabbing one of my roommate's books off a living room shelf. When I texted him about the rabbit he said I was overreacting and that he just brought it as a present because people like rabbit, and said he was just there to get his book. I was a vegetarian at the time, I still won't eat rabbit faked a miscarriage, but really had an abortion on a planned pregnancy after she woke up one day and decided she didn't love me anymore, it's been over a year and I'm still losing sleep over it, edit, wow this kind of blew a bit, first thanks for the gold, stranger, I guess I'll clarify a few things now, I'm not so torn about it because of the miscarriage itself, I'm a pro-choice person and that was her decision to make, what keeps me up at night is the fact that we both said we wanted it, and that she lied about it and is still lying about it to this day, I didn't find out it was really an abortion until five months after it happened when she pissed off every mutual friend we had, by announcing she was pregnant by another ex. So her best friend came to me and showed me the conversation between them about it, where she admitted to the abortion and laughed about it. I also realize she's probably a lunatic and I'm definitely better off without having her in my life. And in hindsight, there were a lot of red flags I probably should have saw before agreeing to having a kid with this woman, but sometimes we make really bad decisions and sometimes those decisions bite us really hard, in the ass. On my birthday, a few months after our breakup, she called me and wanted to see me. I was having a very difficult time with the breakup and was genuinely extremely happy to hear from her, so I said sure, come on over. So she came over, we drank, talked, and eventually had sex. Afterwards, she wanted me to walk her home as I usually did, as we were walking up the alley behind her street. This was our usual route that we took to get to her place from mine. She said hey, I have a birthday present for you. Close your eyes and put out your hand. So I did, and suddenly I was on the ground. When I opened my eyes, I saw her looking at me with complete hatred, and she started swinging at me like her life depended on it. She must have hit me in the face at least 4-5 times before I realized what was happening. I was in complete shock. Then I looked down the alley, and saw a bunch of people coming out of the shadows and running towards me. Long story short, her coming over and having drinks, smiling and laughing with me, and even having sex with me was just an act to get me to that spot, where she had prepared an ambush with about 8 people to kick my ass. She had told them all that I would beat her regularly, slept with her friends, and raped her on more than one occasion, and all of it was completely untrue. 
I managed to get away before the other guys caught up with me. Luckily, I still have absolutely no idea why that happened. We broke up because she had been cheating on me with several different guys, some of whom had come to me to tell me what was going on. Edit, but wait, there's more. A few weeks after that incident, I went to a concert with a few friends. She was there. Somehow I managed to get past what had happened and be civil with her. Right near the end of the show, a guy came up and was like hey, you're Necrosis 13, we'll see you outside after the show's over. I called up a friend to come pick me up, and as he pulled up with his van, I ran outside to try to jump in, got intercepted halfway, thrown to the ground, and stomped by at least two people. All I saw was the bottom of people's shoes as they were hitting my face. Oh, yeah? And a couple of weeks later, she blew my half-brother in front of a bunch of mutual friends in a park, and finally, tried to kill herself and told investigators that it was because I raped her. I was questioned by social workers once, and I guess they believed me because I never heard from them again. She later spent three months on suicide watch in the hospital. Long story short, never stick your dick in crazy. This isn't a story about a crazy ex of mine, but rather one of my younger brothers that I ended up having to deal with. Years ago I developed a heavy following on Tumblr because I shared the fan music I made there. My younger brother, I think he was 13 or 14, thought the website looked fun and made himself an account. Now I didn't know about this until it had gone really far, but one of my fans who was my age, which would have been 16 or 17, decided to initiate an online flirtation, and then a relationship, with my still in middle school brother. It made me really mad once I found out about it, but at the same time I knew that he would be encountering, dating girls all his life and nothing would be more wounding to street cred than having your Tumblr famous big sister step in on one of your relationships. My stance was to stay out of it. But I couldn't help but notice that my brother was going in and out of really severe moodiness, and I felt like it had something to do with her. So I looked up her blog. This girl was definitely cracked. Either that, or she was exploring a mentally ill Tumblr persona, posted constantly about voices in her head, and how she wanted to kill herself, but she couldn't leave him, meaning my middle school aged brother, behind, or how he did or said something that made her want to cut herself, or whatever, tons and tons of psycho manipulative bullshit, so I did what any loving older sister would do, ran one of her selfie through reverse google image search to see if I could find a match on Facebook, ended up getting her full name, searched her name, found her in an online newspaper article for being on the honor roll, called the school, was put through to her guidance counselor, and described in detail the girl's behavior. I also emailed the GC screenshots from the girl's blog. GC said that behavior seemed very out of character for her, aiding my suspicion that the blog was make-believe, and that it would be addressed right away. According to what she told my brother in her last messages to him, she was called down to the guidance office. Her parents were there. She found out that someone had reported her blog, and they went through it in front of her, making her explain every post. It was gone the next day, and she never made an effort to contact my little brother again. Cyber Detective Lily Pushan. Holy shit, you're the cyber police everyone warns me about. Good for you for protecting your little brother. That really could have escalated into something much worse. Hugs for you, internet friend. I posted this before, my ex and I dated in high school to my freshman year of college, it was more like a friendship to me, we never kissed or did anything physical other than holding hands and we just hanged out a lot, he was always deeply in love with me, but it was more like an obsession that I didn't reciprocate, one day when he fell asleep while we were watching a movie on his laptop, I had a strange gut feeling to look around on it, on his desktop, there was a folder with my initials on it, I opened it and there were 400 pictures and videos of me, they were all taken unbeknown to me. They were all mostly of my legs, crotch area, but with clothes on. The pictures were taken everywhere, public places like at restaurants under the table, in the car, at school, at our houses, etc. All while I had no clue. Like I mentioned earlier, we never did anything physical. We were both virgins. It hit me. He always had his iPod touch on him and it always seemed like he was on it playing games and other stuff. That's how he must have taken these pictures. At the bottom of the folder, there were new videos that were recent at the time. I play them and somehow the footage came from inside my dorm closet. I always went in there to change right after I took a shower and he knew my routine. I go into my dorm closet and find the hole where he would put the camera, iPod. It was 4am when I found all of this and I guess it hadn't hit me yet because I was so tired and just knocked out. Then I woke up, 
realizing what I had found and how serious it was, I called my best friend. She came over to my dorm and I showed her, both of us cried on my bed for a while. I had never felt so violated in my life. Later that day, a small group of my closest friends helped me confront him. I told him I found what was on his laptop. He looked at me like a deer in the headlights. He started crying saying I tried to stop, but I couldn't help myself. He then ran out the door and sat on a bench outside my dorm crying with his head down for hours. I can see it from my window. After that, he stalked me. At my job, he would be outside when I got out at 10 p.m. and watch me from his car. I had a new BF by then, my first real love, and he would be with me to protect me from my ex. He also tried kill said new BF with a bat when we all went to the same house party. My friends locked me and my new BF in a room so my ex couldn't get to us. I could hear him trying to break into the room and swinging the bat and breaking stuff in the house while others were holding him back. Then he disappeared at the party and everyone went to look for him. They found him outside on a porch, in the fetal position rocking back and forth and crying. A year later, even after losing his virginity to someone else and me being with my new BF for a while, he told some mutual friends that he didn't care about any girl and that he just loved me forever. To this day, everyone I'm close to knows that if I were murdered, they'd know who the prime suspect would be. Get a restraining order already. She had a friend admit to me, for her, that she was never actually raped, and that she regretted having sex with him but she was high and horny and didn't want me to leave her for fucking up, before she told me that he was a good friend of mine, and I threatened to kill him if I ever saw him near her. Six months of trying to help her, get her to therapy, do what I can for her, and turns out she's just a cunt, still angry over how I got played for a fool. Responses to some of the questions. My friend, did know, she had a boyfriend, did not know, it was me, a mutual friend of mine and his told me to talk to them, hinting that they were together behind my back, I did ask him first, and he told me they got high and fooled around and apologized to me, saying he knew she had a boyfriend but didn't know it was me, after she told me her side of the story, I wasn't inclined to believe a word he said, I would never, even after this, turn away my girlfriend if she told me she was raped. However I would probably keep my response in check, he was never charged, she never went to the police, only went for counseling, never went to the hospital even though I begged her to, I was angry, I wanted to see him go to prison, I wanted bad things to happen to him there, I have not reached out to him, partially, honestly, due to the fact I'm embarrassed of my actions now, and secondly because the kind of people I was around at the time are not the kind of people you should surround yourself with, he had bragged before about being with women regardless if they were in relationships. I'm probably too late to the party on this thread, but this hits home all too much. Five years ago I broke it off with a fine young lady after just a six month relationship. However, a week later come to find out that it was not exactly over for her and she had been keeping an eye on me, to make sure I'm okay I guess. Keep in mind she lived on the complete opposite side of a major city too, so some dedication was needed here. I was forced to confront after she calls me freaking out about who I was hanging out with because I wasn't home at night. This was more than unsettling, and I see she's in front of my house at about 2 in the morning. After a very heated argument, her physically attacking me, biting me after I bear hugged her, still have the scar. I demanded her to leave me alone and never come back, so she gets in her car and peels out off into the distance. That relief was very short-lived. As soon as I thought she was gone she turns around and floors it going 60-ish in a quiet neighborhood, swerves to run me over. I have to dive out of the way to avoid the car. She slammed into my neighbor's car so hard that it spins out into the middle of the street, and all I can hear is her crazy ass screaming. Her middle console catches on fire and I have to pull her dumb ass out of the car. Shortly after all the neighbors are awake, and the place is swarming with cops and other emergency vehicles. This is burned into my memory. So get this, I dated a guy in my late high school years who was very reserved and was very handsome, the first 7 or 8 months were unreal, I was so happy and things were going great, soon thereafter he and I decided to tell each other our deepest darkest secrets, 1010 do not recommend, he told me that when he was young he used to cut holes in his stuffed animals and would fuck them, I had no idea what to think. But I honestly didn't feel like it was the worst thing someone could do so I just let it reside in the back of my mind. For unrelated reasons things got a little rocky in the months after. He became so jealous and overprotective, he would come up to my work and watch me for hours. He would drive me to and from wherever I needed no matter what. He would also get so upset when I spent any time away from him. When I did get the opportunity to hang out with friends he would always buy me flowers or pillow pets and leave them on my car almost as if he was letting me know he was watching. This just got 
got worse over the next three months and I figured it was probably time to end things. I decided I was just going to drive over and just let him know things weren't working out, simple enough, right, wrong. When he figured out what I was doing and completely lost it, punched holes in everything, broke whatever was in sight, and had a full on episode. When I got to the house he was waiting for me in his truck which was completely ripped apart, might I add. I figured it probably wasn't the best idea to get out of the car so I turned around to drive away and the crazy ass busted out his truck window and then followed dangerously close to my car. After about a half hour of him riding my ass he finally let off and called me claiming he wrecked his truck. I went back to get him, but I'll skip the details on the endless crazy ass shit he pulled that night. Needless to say it was over. A few months after the breakup I decided it was probably a good time to get all of the things I had left at his house. It was mostly clothes, but I always left the stuffed animals he got me there, just because. Long story short I walked into his closet, the walls were still completely demolished from his episode, and I found some of the pillow pets he had bought throughout the relationship. I grabbed my favorite one, a grey elephant named Charlotte, and on the underside she was just covered in jizz. By covered I mean graciously glazed from multiple endeavors. Side note, it is so we're typing this out. It never seemed as crazy as it actually is. And that's all I have to say about that. By covered I mean graciously glazed from multiple endeavors. What the fuck? I had an ex spend over $600 on fake pregnancy stuff, sonograms, pregnancy tests, a fake baby belly to go under her shirt, to convince me she was having my baby. It worked for about a month, before she got caught up and her web of lies began unfolding. I eventually found out the truth when a friend of a friend who worked at the doctor's office looked up her medical record. I know it's illegal, I didn't ask anyone to do it. They just did. When confronted, she threatened to kill herself, and drove off into the night. I called the state police, they traced her phone and found her unharmed. She had to undergo 48 hours of mandatory psyche evaluation for that stunt, and never explained to me why she did it. Last I heard she told everyone she was dating a guy from North Carolina, this happened in New York, except when she went to visit him he had idea who she was. That chick was legitimately insane, and I feel lucky to have gotten out of that relationship as cleanly as I did. So remember kids. Kids, always wrap it up and don't stick your dick in crazy, no matter how hot she is, feel free to love with a glove. I was deployed to Iraq for 15 months, and she had moved back to Washington state from Savannah where we were stationed while I was gone. She was really high strung, didn't have any friends in the area, so I didn't really mind. Since she went to the very opposite corner of the United States, I had to spend my mature leave, about six months in, with her and not see my family. Well, about three days after I get home she tells me that she screwed some guy at a party, and apparently her whole family and all her friends knew about it. So there I am, home from combat and looking like a damn fool, deal breaker for me. So I tell her we're getting divorced. Well, the army has a regulation that states that so long as you're married, you owe your wife a significant portion of your housing allowance. The army doesn't care about circumstances, and she knew this. For the rest of my deployment, 11 months, plus about 8 months after I got home, she refused to sign the divorce papers because I was having to pay her nearly $700 per month and had no recourse. She then used an outdated general power of attorney I had given her when I deployed, to steal about $6,000 from my savings so she could put a down payment on a car. When I found out what had happened and confronted her, she went around telling her family that I had beaten her and that I was abusive, so they stopped giving me any information. She then called my commander and accused me of the same plus multiple occasions of marital rape. Yes, that's a thing. After the investigation, military, not police, I was of course cleared of any wrongdoing. My commander, now hip to her bullshit, dug out a regulation that stated that if we had been physically separated for 18 months, and were in the process of divorce, that I no longer owed her support. She sent my ex a letter with the regulation highlighted, and I had the divorce papers in four days time. Needless to say, when I was free I never looked back. With that out of the way, don't forget to subscribe and hit the bell icon if you want more content to keep appearing in your subscription box. Thanks for watching and until next time.